Right for Judge, and here's the 3-1. The strike zone, it's the only thing that matters. For hitters, we're only as good as the pitches we swing at. When we chase balls out of the zone, we lose. When we're focused, present, and on time on pitches in the strike zone, we win. How good we get at recognizing spin speed and location of balls in the strike zone dictates our quality of at-bats. To hit at a high level, we need strike zone awareness. In other words, what pitches will be above the knees and below the letters while crossing the plate? We may even need to be aware of zones just off the plate because, well, some umpires suck. Kidding? Sorta. Anyways, in this video, we're going to talk about everything there is to know about the strike zone, the type of zones, Ted Williams' philosophy on the strike zone, the power of posting up, looking away and adjusting in, looking middle in and sitting dead red pull, and gap to gap. Buckle up, let's get started. One of the simplest ways to look at zones in the strike zone is in the form of nine boxes. Up in the zone, at the belt, and then at the knees, middle in, heart of the plate, middle of the way. This gives you nine zones for a hitter to visualize as possible strikes. Anything out of the zone is a ball and anything in the zone is a strike. A hitter's number one job is to swing at strikes, pitches in the zone. More specifically, it's to get a good pitch to hit, a good pitch to handle. Now here's where strategy and self-awareness comes into play. The pitches you should be sitting on, attacking, and swinging at will be dependent on your role in the lineup, your strengths, and your weaknesses. The pitcher's arsenal, what their out pitch is, what they pitch to start off in that bat, etc. Ultimately, this is about the situation of the game. All of these factors should dictate how aggressive or selective you are during an at bat. I can make an hour long video on pitch selection alone. Ted Williams nailed it right on the head when he said hitting is about getting a good pitch to hit. His 77 zone point of contact career batting average says many things, but one of them is this. Which part of the zone you make contact with matters. More importantly, most of the damage you do on pitches will be on mistake pitches left over the heart of the plate and mistake pitches left up in the zone. Which brings me to my next point. There's power in posting up. Some of your furthest balls you will ever hit will be the hanging breaking ball or chest high fastball. Ever since the pitcher is nine years old, they're taught to keep the ball down. Why? because the pitch up in the zone is an easier pitch to hit. Second, as hitters, if we're aggressive on pitches up in the zone, we're less likely to chase pitches down in the zone. The curveball that starts at the waist will end up in the dirt at point of contact. The curveball that starts at the chest will end up in your wheelhouse at point of contact. When we visualize a zone, we want to think about the upper three parts of the zone to attack pitches, especially when we have count leverage. 1-0, 2-0, 3-1. If it's high, let it fly. If it's low, you know the rest. Looking away and adjusting in. Similar to looking up and then adjusting down, we can look away and then adjust middle in. Now, the key benefit to this type of strike zone approach is being on time. Hitting is about timing. We have to start on time to be on time. We also have to have the ability to stay back when we need to let the ball travel in the zone or take the pitch the other way. As hitters, we do this by looking for something on the outer half of the plate and then adjust by sucking our hands inside the middle end pitch. Now here's a key point. The more on time we are on the pitch middle away, the more susceptible we will be on the pitch middle end and vice versa. This is why we have to be selectively aggressive, especially early in the count. The higher level you go, the more advanced the pitching, the harder it is to have full 100% play coverage. Only the elite of the elite hitters are able to drive high velocity fastballs on the outside black while reacting to the high velocity fastball on the inside black and vice versa. Which is why a great base foundation is this, the gap to gap approach. Instead of trying to achieve full play coverage, we're going to simplify things. We're going to look for a pitch over the heart of the plate. Middle, slightly middle in, and slightly middle away. Anything outside this keyhole, we're not swinging at with less than two strikes. We're selectively aggressive and attacking anything in this zone, and when we get it, we don't miss. 
We go into depth with explaining each and every one of these approaches in the Win the At Bat course, where you can see just how to train and apply this with over a dozen hitting drills. You can get access to this for free when you join the Applied Vision Baseball app and start training your pitch recognition and pitch selection and timing for $1. Hitters, the strike zone is yours to control. The at-bat is yours to dictate. When we learn how to master pitch selection and plate appearance, the game will slow down, and you'll begin to trust your abilities. The point of hitting is to make it fun, whether you're 0 for 4 with 4 strikeouts or 4 for 4 with 4 doubles. Learn it, apply it, be and stay student of the game.